Units. In science, units are king. When you make a measurement, it's meaningless unless you know what unit it was measured in. This is one of the key differences between maths and science. For much of the time in maths, you're interested in numbers just for their own sake. If you mention the number 10, then that means exactly 10, no more, no less. But in science, if you say you've measured something to be 10, you'll immediately be met with the response, 10 what? Well, you might say, I'm holding a stopwatch and I was timing this cyclist, so obviously it's seconds. Really? Obviously? What if it were minutes? Or the cyclist was doing an endurance event and it were hours? Or maybe you're timing the cyclist's heartbeat or how long it takes the bike wheel to complete one three sixtieth of a revolution? And how do I know you're not measuring in shakes or jiffies or micro fortnights? Well, okay, by looking at the stopwatch. But you see my point. If you don't have the unit, then the number itself gives you no useful information. So our watchword in science is no naked numbers. Make your numbers decent by giving them units. In chemistry, we use metric units. The modern form of the metric system is known as the International System of Units, which has seven base units. And from these, the units of all other quantities can be derived. Two of these units are not so common in, chemis in chemistry. There's amperes, the unit of electrical current, although you may encounter this in electrochemistry, and candelas, the measurement of the intensity of light. The other five, though, will turn up frequently. We have kilograms for mass, meters for length, seconds for time, Kelvin, degrees Kelvin for temperature, and moles for quantities of atoms and molecules. Kilograms, meters, and seconds you'll already be familiar with. Degrees Kelvin work much like degrees Celsius, and we'll look at this in another video. Moles are the unit which is central for chemists. We'll be using this unit constantly as we learn how to calculate chemical quantities. Of course, it's not enough simply to have kilograms, meters, and seconds. Sometimes we want to measure things that are very light or very long or very fast. So then we change the size of the unit by adding a prefix. Some of these prefixes you know already. For instance, kilogram has one built in. Kilo means 1,000. So one kilogram is equivalent to 1,000 grams. The prefixes you most need to be familiar with are these. Kilo, deci, centi, milli, micro, and nano. You can always look the conversions up, but if you know them off by heart, it speeds things up when you're plowing through a long calculation. So let's use meters as an example. One kilometer is equivalent to 1,000 meters because kilo means 1,000. Deci means a tenth. A decimeter is equivalent to a tenth of a meter or 0.1 meters. And this means the same as saying that 10 decimeters is the is equivalent to one meter. Centi means one one hundredth. One centimeter is equivalent to 0.01 meters, or we can say that a hundred centimeters are in a meter. Milli means one one thousandth. One millimeter is equivalent to 0 0.001 meters, one times 10 to the minus three meters, or we can say that there are a thousand millimeters in a meter. Micro means a millionth. One micrometer equals one times 10 to the minus six meters. Or we can say that there are one million micrometers in a meter. Micrometers are also sometimes called microns. And finally, nano means one billionth. So a nanometer is one times 10 to the minus nine meters. Or we can say that there are one times 10 to the nine nanometers in a meter. Make sure you're familiar with these prefixes, you'll encounter them frequently.